hello students good day and welcome back to this channel today we are going to begin a series on preparation for wasi for core mathematics paper one and two so we have a lot of videos coming up shortly and these videos contain solutions to questions that are likely to appear in your exams now the aim of these videos are one to help us prepare adequately for the upcoming exam and then secondly to help us know the way to approach certain difficult questions so if this is something you are interested in do well to subscribe to this channel like this video and share this video to all your friends so without wasting much time let's start solving the questions now question number one in the relation t is equal to m times the square root of n square plus 4r now i we are supposed to make n the subject of the relation i i we are going to find the positive value of n when t is equal to 25, m is 5, and then r is 4. So first of all, we are supposed to make n the subject of this relation. And then secondly, we are going to find the positive value of n when we have t to be 25, m to be 5, and then r to be 4. So let's solve this question together. So we have the relation t equals m times the square root of n square plus 4r. So because we are going to make n the subject, we need to square both sides of the equation to do away with the square root. So we have t square equals m times the square root of n square plus 4r. Or square so t square becomes t square and for the term on the right hand side the square affects m and the square root value so we have m squared times the square root of n square plus 4r or squared t squared is equal to m squared times this time the square cancels the square root and then we are left with n square plus 4r. Now let's simplify. t square equals m square times n square plus 4m square r. Now since we want to make n the subject, we need to make the term containing n stand alone. So we are going to transpose 4m square r to the left hand side so that we have t square minus 4m square r equals m square times n square so we divide through by m square and then we have n square to be equal to t square minus 4m square r all over m square now because we want to make n the subject, we are going to take the square root of both sides. So whatever you do for the left hand side, you need to do the same for the right hand side. So the square cancels the square root and we are left with n equals the square root of t square minus 4 m square r over m square. So by this, we've been able to make n the subject of the relation. Now let's solve for i i. We are to find the positive value of n when t is 25, m is 5, and then r is 4. So we have t to be 25, m to be 5, and then r to be 4. So let's substitute these values into this relation. So we have n equals the square root of t square minus 4 m square r over m square so substituting these values into this relation we have t square to be 25 square minus 4 times we have m to be 5 so 5 square times r which is 4 divided by 5 square 
now 25 square is 625 5 squared is 25 25 times 4 is 100 100 times 4 is 400 over 5 squared is 25 So 625 minus 400 is 225 divided by 25. 25 goes into itself once, into 225, 9 times. So we have n equals the square root of 9. Now from the question, we are supposed to find the positive value of n. So it means that n is equal to 3. So we are done with our first question. Let's move on to the second question. So for the second question, we are to find the values of k for which the matrix k minus 2, 1, 2, k minus 3 has no inverse. We are going to find the values of k for which this matrix k minus 2, 1, 2, k minus 3 has no inverse. Now a matrix is said to have no inverse if the determinant of that matrix is zero. So a matrix is said to have no inverse if the determinant of the matrix is equal to zero so a matrix is said to have no inverse if the determinant of the matrix is equal to zero so let's move on to solve the question now let a be the matrix k minus 2 1 2 k minus 3 then the determinant of A is equal to k minus 2, 1, 2, k minus 3. And this is equal to 0. Now, given the matrix, say P, A, B, C, D, then the determinant of P is equal to a times d minus b times c so given the matrix p this is how to find the determinant of that matrix now we are going to apply this same thing here so we have k minus 3 times k minus 2 minus 2 times 1 equals 0 so this becomes we multiply k by k to get k square. Negative 3 times k is negative 3k. Negative 2 times k is negative 2k. And then negative 2 times negative 3 is plus 6. And then negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. So let's simplify. We have k square minus 5k plus 4 equals 0. Now the coefficient of the k square term is 1, the coefficient of the constant term is 4, so 1 times 4 is 4. Now let's find the factors of 4, we have 1 and 4, and then 2 and then 2. Now if you want to get negative 5, then we can use 1 and 4. We are going to arrange it such that we have negative 1 minus 4, which is equal to negative 5. So this becomes k square minus k minus 4k plus 4 equals 0. Now negative k minus 4k is still negative 5k. So the greatest common factor between k square and k is k. So we have k square divided by k is k, so k minus 1. And then the greatest common factor between negative 4k and then 4 is negative 4. And then we have k minus 1 inside the brackets. So we have k minus 1 k minus 4 equals 0, k minus 1 equals 0, k is equal to 1, 
and then we have k minus 4 equals 0 k is equal to 4 so the values of k for which the matrix has no inverse is k equals 1 or k equals 4 now let's move on to the third question the first three terms of an arithmetic progression ap are x plus 1 4x minus 2 and then 6x minus 3 respectively if the last term is 18 find the i value of x and then ii the sum of the terms of the progression so we have the first three terms of the ap to be x plus 1 4x minus 2 and then 6x minus 3 we also have the last term to be 18 we are going to find x and the sum of the terms of the progression so let's start off with i because we are dealing with ap we need to write down the general term of an arithmetic progression so we know that the general term of an ap or the nth term of an ap is giving us a plus un equals a plus n minus 1 times d so we have a to be the first term n to be the number of terms and then we have d to be the common difference now we said that the first three terms are x plus 1 4x minus 2 and then 6x minus 3 so it means that the first term u1 is equal to x plus 1 u2 which is the second term is 4x minus 2 and then we have u3 to be 6x minus 3 so these are the first the second and the third terms of the ap now for ap we talk about the common difference we say that the common difference between any two successive terms are equal so then u3 minus u2 should be equal to u2 minus u1 the common difference between any two successive terms are equal now we have u3 to be 6x minus 3 and then we have u2 to be 4x minus 2 u2 is 4x minus 2 and then we have u1 to be x plus 1 now the reason why we develop this equation is to find the value of x now let's simplify so we have 6x minus 4x minus 3 plus 2 negative 1 times negative 2 is 2 equals 4x minus x minus 2 minus 1 so let's simplify so this becomes 2x negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1 equals 4x minus x is 3x and then we have negative 2 minus negative 1 which is negative 3 now let's transpose 2x to the right hand side and then negative 3 to the left hand side so this becomes negative 1 plus 3 equals 3x minus 2x so negative 1 plus 3 is 2 and then 3x minus 2x is x so we have the value of x to be 2 so now let's move on to ii we are going to find the sum of the terms of the progression now the sum of the nth term of an ap is given as sn equals n over 2 times 2a plus n minus 1 times d now we don't know the value of n we don't know the value of a neither do we know the value of d we need to find all these values before we can find the sum of the terms of the progression now from i we have u1 which is equal to a to be x plus 1 we had the value of x to be 2 so substituting 2 in here we have 2 plus 1 which is equal to 3 
so we have a to be equal to 3 now let's move on to find the value of d so to find the value of d we can either use u3 minus u2 or u2 minus u1 we should arrive at the same answer so let's use u3 minus u2 now u3 is 6x minus 3 and then u2 is 4x minus 2 so when we simplify this we have 6x minus 4x minus 3 plus 2 this is equal to 2x minus 1 now since we have the value of x to be 2 this becomes 2 times 2 minus 1 2 times 2 is 4 4 minus 1 is 3 so we have the value of d the common difference to be 3 now that we have the value of d let's find the value of n now from the question we were told that the last term of the ap is 18. now the last term of the apl is giving us a plus n minus 1 times d so we have the value of a to be 3 we have the value of d also to be 3 so let's substitute the values of a and then d into this equation so we have 18 equals 3 plus n minus 1 times 3 so this becomes 18 equals 3 plus 3 times n is 3n 3, 3 times 1 is 3 now this is plus 3 this is minus 3 they cancel each other we are left with 3n equals 18 so we divide through by 3 and then we have n to be 6 so the value of n is 6 now let's substitute the values of n a and then d into this equation so we have the equation sn equals n over 2 times 2a plus n minus 1 times d we have a to be 3 d to be 3 and then n to be 6 so we are going to find the sum of the number of things we have n to be 6 so this changes to s6 equals 6 over 2 times 2a we have a to be 3 plus 6 minus 1 times d so let's simplify 6 divided by 2 is 3 2 times 3 is 6 6 minus 1 is 5 times 3 is 15 6 plus 15 is 21 and then 3 times 21 is 63 so the sum of the terms of this progression is 63